Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, hopefully everybody's having a wonderful morning. It's uh, pretty beautiful outside. Um, my name is Chris Pokrivnak. I'm the regional vice, I am a regional vice president at Vistar Credit Union and I also serve as a member of the St. John's uh, County Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Today's virtual discussion is the third and unfortunately for now, final in a series of three workshops uh, brought to you as a collaboration between the Chamber and Vistar Credit Union. Uh, today's workshop focuses on how to protect yourself and your business from fraud and other types of financial crimes. Today, we're lucky enough to be joined by Bobby Fultz. He's a fraud investigation manager with Vistar Credit Union. Bobby is a graduate of the University of Central Florida. He started his career in 1988 as a probation officer for the state of Florida Department of Corrections. He then joined the St. John's County Sheriff's Office as a deputy sheriff before taking a position as, as a special agent for the United States Secret Service. Bobby served with the Secret Service for over 20 years. 14 of those years were devoted to white collar and financial crimes investigations within the Jacksonville field office. As fraud investigations, as fraud investigations manager with Vistar, Bobby and his team work with all the branches and departments of Vistar Credit Union to protect our members and the entire organization from those fraudsters. And I can definitely attest to his effectiveness in that role. Really appreciate him. Uh, welcome, Bobby, and thank, thank you for joining you. us today. And I appreciate share it. your your experience and insights. Uh, before we jump in and and, and get started uh, with the discussion. I just want to outline the format really quickly. Uh, of course, we just want to remind everyone that it, the workshop is being recorded um, and will be made available on the Chamber's website after we close it up today. While Bobby's speaking, of course, we do ask that everybody uh, remain muted uh, just to minimize the background noise and just make sure that everybody can hear, which I can see that everyone is. So thank you for already knowing the rules. Um, we do wanna make sure that, that we address as many questions and concerns uh, that you might have and, and that you submit your questions for Bobby using the chat feature. Um, just in case you are, if you are not familiar, just scroll over uh, your screen, little chat, chat bubble at the bottom, click that button, chat bubble or chat, the chat will open on the right side and then you'll be able to type in your question. And now I'm gonna stop blabbing at you and let Bobby have the stage and share all of his great insights. So it's all yours, Bobby. I appreciate it. Um, forgive me for, uh, this is my first time doing the Zoom meeting like this, uh, as far as uh, a speech. Uh, I'm used to doing it in person, walking around, talking and uh, dealing with people that way. So I appreciate everybody's time on this. Um, with this um, situation here, uh, as I talk, I might jump around a little bit, um, and, but again, if you have questions about a particular situation or, or issue or scenario, uh, please ask it uh, and, and we'll try to address it uh, uh, at, that, at that moment. Um, I'm going to start talking about, uh, well, like as he said, my background, I've, I've been working fraud investigations for 20-something years, was in law enforcement for 30-something years. Um, one of the things that I'm seeing, and we'll talk kind of about businesses and small businesses uh, issues first, and then we'll get into more of just every everyday thing for everybody that will include businesses, your personal uh, uh, situations, uh, and, and, and so forth. Um, BEC is one of the things that is uh, uh, a big a big thing right now with uh, with businesses. BEC is uh, what we call business email compromise. So. Uh, it, it all entails with, with between that and, and securing your, your, your systems, kind of all connects. Uh, but with business email compromise, what happens is people that are, are, are generally moving any kind of money, it, it, I'll use an example for a law firm or a, a, a mortgage group that is closing on houses and doing a lot of money movement that way. Uh, people will, they will infiltrate, the fraudsters will infiltrate your system, watch your emails, uh, listen, you know, read them and wait. And when they see a, a certain money movement about to happen, they will, they will uh, 
identify that email address, they will change just slightly. It could be one digit, one letter, uh, anything. Um, and to make it look like to the naked eye, if you're really looking at it quickly, you're not going to pay attention to it. So what will happen is um, they'll say suddenly tell one whoever's sending the money to suddenly change. Uh, we send it to this address and send it to this routing number and this account number instead. And they do it. And then 100,000, 500,000 or whatever is gone. And once it's sent, it's gone because they're going to get it. Uh, as soon as that wire hits their, their account, they're going to take that money. It's going to go elsewhere. And I'd say 90% of the time, you're not going to get that money back. If it happens and we catch it very quickly uh, between the financial institutions and law enforcement, they can track it down and, and stop it. But that's very rare. Um, one of the basic, very basic things to do to prevent this is, is just if you see a sudden change in something, to verify it, instead of communicating through email, which is everybody does it, everybody gets lazy, cuts corners, pick up the phone, take a minute, call the person that you know by their number that you know, not a new number or anything else, verify whatever's been changed through whatever you've already known from the past. Um, talk to them on the phone or in person and say, did you change this? Is this exactly where you want to go? And most of the time they're going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. So by doing that, you protect protect yourself, you protect uh, your, your customer um, uh, from, from losing the money. Um, because obviously they're going to, one, one, the company's going to blame the, the, uh, the customer, the customer's going to blame the, the business. Uh, and it, 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 you might not ever prove who actually is at fault at that point. Uh, you know, I'd say it's 50% uh, choice there. Um, with that, uh, it, when you have your bank accounts, and this kind of goes for personal too, when you have your bank accounts uh, and, and your, and your uh, finances and stuff and you're moving it and you're checking it all the time on your computers at work, um, use those computers, keep it as a standalone. If you're doing any kind of financial stuff, keep it as a standalone computer. If you need to surf the web or your employees need to surf the web, or even if you're doing it at home, do it on a separate tablet, phone, computer, whatever you do, your, your finances on, do it on something else uh, when it comes to surfing the web. Because that's where people, that's where they infiltrate you. It's through, you click on something accidentally, uh, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're looking for something particular, you click on something that has a malware virus uh, and it downloads. Uh, your malware protection, your virus protection uh, systems are only as good as the ones that they know about. People are constantly, the fraudsters are constantly out there developing new malware, new spyware. And if, if it doesn't read it and understand it, the, the, the antivirus uh, 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 systems, if they don't read it they, and they don't know it, they're not going to catch it right away. They might catch it later, but after that, the damage is done. Your, your, your information's out there. Um, uh, if you, if you, uh, you have um, checkbooks in your, in your business, um, you know, you have cleaning crews come into your businesses. Secure that stuff. Always have it locked up. Uh, somewhere because they won't steal from the top where it's noticeable. They're going to steal from the inside, the bottom, or they're going to take the PII, which is the personal uh, information of people. Uh, if you have any of that kind of stuff, don't keep it out in the open. If you have people that are outside the business coming in after hours, or even when you're working there, make sure when you're, you're there, it's covered up uh, if you're not or locked up. Um, when you're, when you're paying your, uh, um, your bills, uh, try to use your online uh, payment systems as best you can. Keep less of a paper trail. People still dumpster dive. Uh, if you do keep a paper trail uh, and you're getting rid of your stuff, put it in a shredder or use the, the companies. If you have a lot of paper, use the shredded companies, uh, people of that nature. Um, you know, as with the Secret Service, we use them all the time. You know, uh, it's you just don't want to throw things out there because, again, people dumpster dive. They do it all the time and they find treasure troves of information, account numbers, uh, your personal information, social security numbers, whatever, uh, it's there. Um, when, you're, when you have your systems uh, at, your, at your business, depending on the size of business, but you wanna, you wanna always have a good IT person available, whether you hire them to do part-time or you have somebody because you're big enough and you want them full-time, uh, you need to have a good IT person to to deal with your, your information because businesses do get hacked into through, like again, if you have a system and you've shared it where the employees go in there and just get online, 
they put malware in there. I'll give a for instance of uh, there, there was a restaurant. I won't say which one. Uh, and this was years ago, but it still happens. Um, a very popular restaurant. It got hit by uh, malware through their system, which infiltrated their 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 paying system uh, for the point of sales. So every credit card, every debit card that went in there, uh, as soon as it went in and and it didn't alter anything, it did. As soon as it went in there and charged the the, uh, the customers, uh, that information was sent overseas to the uh, at this group particular group was Bulgarian. Um, but uh, there's groups all over the, the world that do this, but because they were identified later. Uh, but when that happened, I was getting a lot of phone calls about, you know, because a lot of prominent people happened to, to eat there. There was attorneys and judges and uh, everything else uh, that were calling me directly because of the case. Uh, but it turned out that they, they had gotten compromised that way. And it took them uh, an outside company to go in and clean and scrub their, their systems and then set up better firewalls and, and whatnot for them. Um, but it, it, it costs them thousands and thousands of dollars, which, you know, there's a lot of small businesses that, you know, 10, 20, $30,000, that, that's going to hurt. So you, you want to be aware of that stuff. So a good IT person uh, to set up good firewalls and protection uh, is, is, a, is a plus. But again, the simple thing is if you have things that you need to surf the web, keep a, keep a separate computer for that. Uh, if it gets compromised, fine, you get it cleaned up, but it doesn't it doesn't infiltrate your, your account system and your, and your pay systems and, and your finances, because obviously you have to, you have payroll, you have other things you have to deal with. Um, let's see here. Uh, there, there's a lot of things to talk about. So forgive me for just a second here, but, um, and if you got any questions so far, please, that by all means, uh, you know, send them and let's, let's discuss them as we go with each topic. Um, I don't know if anybody has anything so far. All right. So anyway, I'm I'm working at home, so forgive me for a second. Have a good day, son. Right, <laughs> He's leaving for work. Um, so let's talk about spoofing for a second. Um, spoofing is another big thing that's happened recently, and and I don't know if everybody understands what spoofing is, but uh, if you don't, it's 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 a pretty much it's where if you, somebody calls you, they can use whatever number they want to, and you're going to think if you know that number, if it's a friend. Uh, you're going to think it's that friend, or if you think it's your financial institution. Uh, uh, many financial institutions had it where uh, a system of uh, spoofing where, where people were getting called and they were uh, uh, pe people calling in were spoofing the, the financial institution's number and saying they were with the fraud department or whatever department and they needed to discuss their accounts. Uh, the people would Absolutely, they would identify the number and say, "Okay, yeah, that's that's my my uh, financial institution. Let me. Uh, so, what what is it you need?" And they would give them whatever they asked. If you're if you're getting called from us, say for instance, I, my team, we don't have a problem at Bystar or or even when I was with the we don't have a problem. If you need to verify who we are, hey, hang up the phone, call the main number, call the main number that you know. That exists because when you're calling back, if it's the same spoof number, it's not going to go to the spoof to the to the froster. It's going to go to it's going to go to the uh, to the financial institution or to the location of known. If it's, you're calling the Secret Service to verify that I'm a real agent, then that's where it's going to go. Uh, if you call that main number and then ask for me, if I you know, because I'll give you my name, I'll say just call the main number, ask for me. Uh, you know, this is my extension or whatnot. There's very simple ways to verify things before you can start giving out information. Um, I get calls, you know, I don't know who they are, what they're, you know, talking. I mean, I might have an idea because, uh, you know, and I might believe them, but I'm still going to pick up the phone and call them back, uh, you know, uh, through a number that I know, an 800 number that I'm aware of that I looked up online or that I already am aware of um, based on, uh, you know, back called back in my card. If it's your credit card company, uh, there's 800 numbers on there. Uh, for you to call um, to verify if somebody's actually calling in to check on something, if there's an issue. So th those are very simple things. And, and businesses get the same type of thing. Uh, I, I believe, I don't know if it was down in, it might have been in St. Augustine. There was a, I believe there was a lady at a, a business, an elderly lady that got called about the electric company, power company, that they could say, they're going to shut off your power if you don't you know, pay this money right now. And she took money out of the till, I, I believe, and, 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 and went and bought a gift card because that's what they said to do. Get this gift card and pay it this way. Give me the information. 
that's a big red flag, obviously. And and first of all, the, the, the power companies are not going to call you and tell you they're about to shut off your power. Either they're going to send you a letter, a warning that way, or they're just going to shut it off. I mean, and then you'll figure it out that way. Uh, but the, they're not going to uh, they're not going to tell you we're going to shut it off in a few minutes or else pay up now or else. It's just not going to happen that way. Same with IRS or in, uh, any other government in, uh, entity or uh, business. Um, with your um, with your employees, depending on your size, obviously, but I, I would suggest always doing some type of background check on anybody. Once you narrow it down to if you're about to hire and you have three or four people or two two people that you're looking at, uh, then do a background check on them to find out maybe if they're you know one that's more applicable to work with uh, fit in with your group. Um, you can even small business can afford it because you got back people uh, companies out there to do backgrounds and they'll charge you know thirty forty fifty dollars uh, a person uh, each time so it, it's not that expensive I don't believe uh, depending on how, what in depth you want to go to but at least minimum local background check but I, I would do for that of course uh, depending on like I said what type of business what you're doing uh, what you're looking for. Um, Hey, hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have one question come in. Yes. And I think you uh, you kind of touched a little bit on the IT component. Uh, this question is from uh, Jim LaPointe, and I apologize if I said that a little incorrectly. But um, and uh, in his full disclosure, he is in he is in IT and does some data security. But uh, he kind of he wanted to know your thoughts and and how to help with. A, a, Multi-factor authentication. Uh, to doing the you mean the say that one, the one-time uh, authentication as far as callback and, and text messaging. Uh, so from the IT perspective, the mm -hmm. multi-factor authentication. Okay. Well, um, well, I mean, there's 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 different aspects on that. I mean, we're working with different things now. Uh, with Vistar, we're we're actually working with things to do with uh, voice recognition and authentications. Uh, you know, of course, that'll be something that's voluntary to the person if they would like to share their voice to be known that way, which I would absolutely do it. Um, I, you know, you, you can't to disguise somebody's voice or, or to uh, change it is, you know, it's not that easy. But using that, you have the uh, we, we use the systems where, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're being text messages automatically. Uh, the spoofers were using this, too, though, uh, at that point. But. Um, that's why I say we're, we're, we're using it. Uh, if you get these kind of things, um, it, it, there's still ways if you're needing to reach out to verify, uh, if you're going to be speaking to somebody, but when you're, uh, for instance, if I go to a gas station and it's in a known area, uh, um, of skimming, skimming problems, uh, I immediately, my card stops working. They give me a text, say, is this really you? Of course I, I reply if it is. And if it's not, I'm going to pick up the phone. If I'm getting a text, that, are you doing this uh, uh, or making a purchase here or doing or whatnot? Uh, I'm immediately making a phone call. Uh, so different authentications, uh, the, the more the merrier, honestly. Uh, it, it's to protect your customer, your member uh, or whatnot and your businesses uh, from different from different frauds. So the, the, the more layers of, of, of protection, I think, the better. Some people think it's a little inconvenience, but things move at such a fast pace nowadays. It's smart sometimes to step back a little bit, and you know you can be customer member friendly and 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 uh, slow it down just a little bit. But that's just that's my perspective on things. I'm more the, into the fraud part and not the business part, you know. But I do see both both sides of it for sure. Is I hope that answers your question. If if not, if you want some more clarification, please let me know. Um, if you, if, if you have uh, certain businesses, and I'll talk about personal safety too, uh, because there, it, it seems like there is a lot of, uh, workplace violence nowadays too. Let me just touch on that just a, a minute. If, if you have, uh, things from domestics to whatever, uh, and you don't, there's, and uh, depending on what type of business it is, of course, if you have secure areas, you might want to look at having, you know, different identification badges that, that have people come in and out. And it also it, it uh, identifies them as they do come in and out and timestamps them. Uh, those, those kind of things can help. Videos, 
of the areas. So, you know, some people get freaked out that his big brother is always watching me. Well, no, it's actually, you know, it's not to watch if you were doing your work. It's to, to protect you if something was to happen or if something's going on. You want to protect your business and you want to protect your employees. Um, you know, those kind of things. Because it, it does happen out there and you need to be aware of it. And if you feel that there's something going on between family members, uh, uh, and employees and their family members or friends and employees, whatever it is, or, or two employees, say something, you know, and confront it or, or, or pick up the phone and talk to somebody about it, call law enforcement, let them know because these things need to be addressed because if they fester, then it can be bad. And you don't, it just, nobody needs that. Um, just basic stuff. You know, if you see something, say something, that's always a, 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 a thing with me. Um, Thinking about purchasing for your business, think about having just different type of uh, fraud insurance. Thanks in case you get compromised uh, and, and people, uh, you know, um, get their their accounts uh, taken or, or, or things like that. I said with the uh, the money movement and thing, thing unfortunately does happen. Have some type of insurance to protect you because a big hit of thousands of dollars can, can that can hurt any business. I don't care what, what size, um, you know, so just be aware of these little things like that. Um, let's talk, I mean, let's kind of go into more of the personal thing. Cause again, a lot of things I shared with this, uh, having to do with your, your, your personal, um, selves too at home, uh, when you're at home on, online, the online loan scam or, or online scams that we have, or our phone call scams that we have. I, I, I mean, obviously now I can't see if everybody's you know, raised their hand or whatever, like we do in person, but I, I'm sure there's people out there that have had some type of scam. Uh, people that are where, where I'm talking to today have had some type of scam happen to them, happen to y'all that, uh, you know, whether it be online, whether it be a phone call scam, whether it be skimmed card, somebody's a victim of some type of fraud. I'm sure. Of it. Um, a thing you have to remember about this, as embarrassing as it might seem, it's, it's more important to get over the embarrassment part and share that information with your friends, family, and, and people around you. As a teaching point, what happened to you, you don't want this, that same thing to happen to your family and friends. I'm sure of it. Um, so you need to share these things, talk about them and learn from them. Uh, believe me, people, every day I talk to, every day I talk to somebody uh, for the last 20 years, and I still do, that have had have some kind of scam happen. And, and they're a lot smarter people than me. They're, I'm talking engineers and attorneys and whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, it happens all the time and it, and it can happen to the smartest person in the world. It's just, you get caught up in a moment. You might be busy doing something else, distraction, and it, it just happens. Um, I always also say uh, a saying I have is loneliness of the heart overrides the mind every time. What, what I'm saying with that is the online scams, uh, such as on Facebook. I'm sure many people have Facebook. I don't have Facebook, don't need it. Um, but people have it for their businesses and, 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 and other things. Um, but people that are get on there that, that uh, they, they meet people on there, they start talking to people. Now the fraudsters get on there and they portray themselves as somebody else. They just get on and start befriending people and they get to know them. And then people start talking to them online, chatting online. They're never really speaking to them. So they don't hear uh, that their English is very broken or they're, you know, where they're from or whatever. Uh, uh, they're not who they say they are or doesn't seem to be who they say they are. Um, they get build their confidence, then they tell them all about themselves. Next thing you know, they've told them so much about their personal life that Froster develops a story, uh, a, as I say, a, a a role play, and becomes a person that fits the other person's life. And then they go in there, and next thing you know, it's the perfect person they're meeting, uh, and they have everything they're looking for, and they fall in love with somebody they've never even met. Well, when they do that. They start then they start giving them money to come visit them or and they keep leading them on. And when I say giving them money, I'm not talking about a couple dollars here and there. I'm talking about their whole life savings, their whole retirement. I'm talking right before I left Secret Service, there was one 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 person, I won't say male or female, that gave away over half a million dollars. So that to me is it's gut wrenching, it's heartbreaking, it, it's horrible. And they were so convinced that they met this person before, which they never have, that they were going to marry this person and this person was coming to be with them and has already stayed with them before, which they never have. Um, 
they get brainwashed into a, a situation. Uh, and it, it, and it's, it's a sad thing, but it happens every day. And if you have family or friends that, you love that are in these situations, uh, you need to confront them about it. And you, I mean, you need to be, it, it's almost like an interdiction for drugs or alcohol or anything else. Um, because it, it can, it can ruin their life. It can, you know, they can become homeless because of that. I've had people sell their cars. I mean, they give away their whole life savings. Then, then they sold their car just to give them their last dollar they had, uh, convinced that they were still were helping out. And then once they do that, then they become what we call money mules, uh, where they don't have anything, but they will be part of a, a the scam where they're taking money from other people and they're using their bank accounts to continue sending the money through to other places. That's when you become involved in that, then you're money laundering. Then it becomes a federal crime. And I've warned many victims that I will consider victims up until a point that they're they're going to be, you know, if they get involved and they continue to move money this way, it's money laundering and they can be arrested for it. Once they've been warned by me as, or law enforcement, it doesn't matter who, once it's documented, uh, then they can be charged and they will. And and the, the government, I know the state and, and the federal are, have been doing a lot of talks about this because of the um, SBA. Uh, and PPP fraud loans that are out there. There's been a lot of that. Um, yeah, for this, uh, you know, pandemic, you know, for trying to help the, the people that truly need that. And there are uh, many, many, many people out there that truly needed these loans. But there's people that, that stepped up and, and committed fraud to get them. Uh, there's also uh, the out-of-state unemployment. Um, all, all, there's several states throughout the, uh, the U.S. Um, that have been caught up in this uh uh, identity theft rings that have been, you know, submitting information uh, to get unemployment and getting it, but they're having it sent to a third party. So if, if people that are involved again in the romance scams or different loan scams or, or uh, are, are different. There's many different types of online scams um, are being sent money and told to do certain things with it and keep a certain portion. Um, they think that it's grants or they think they're whatever they think. And, uh, they're involved in in in, uh, in the unemployment fraud scam, and they and they they unknowingly are helping the fraudsters um, until a point. And once you warn them about, it, if they continue to do it. Then they're then they're culpable for their for their negligence and that in that fact. But there are many. There's like I said, on the online scams, you got the romance scams, you got the secret shopper. I don't know if anybody's heard about secret shopper. If people that are looking for easy, quick money jobs, part time jobs, uh, the secret shopper is one of them that you know. They will get you in there. Hey, go go here. Look for these items, and then um, either purchase them for me, and I'll give you the credit card information, which is usually stolen credit card information, and then uh, great, you know, uh, send them send them here or 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 do whatever they're going to do, and I'll pay you um, you know a certain amount of money uh, every two weeks. Well, the scam usually lasts about two weeks before law enforcement catches on and goes knocking on their door. Then whatever items that they they were uh, uh, reshipping or relabeling uh, is sent out. And it's, by that time, it's too late. Um, I don't know if people have heard about the car wrap schemes. Uh, if people, you, you see people out there, businesses that did generally have their, their vehicles wrapped, and, they, it, and they'll pay if it's somebody uh, other than family member or friend or somebody in the business uh, uh, with a wrapped car, they'll pay them a certain fee to, you know, to keep that car wrapped and, and as advertisement driving around in your vehicle. But the scammers will send these these out and send checks to people and say, hey, just, you know, um, here's the here's the, the money, ca you know, cash this check and then take this money and pay this company. And they say they'll have it all. And it's all their company. It's all them. Uh, and by the time the people clear uh, realize that they put a counterfeit check into their account and then they're responsible for it, because anything you put in your account, ultimately, um, you're responsible for. And, and financial institutions have a lot longer than you think to to come back at the other to your financial institution and say, hey, uh, this check was bad. Uh, this money is no good. And then you're in the hole three or four thousand dollars. And you could be a, a student, uh, you know, in college just trying to make a quick dollar and or somebody's unemployed looking for a job, trying to make ends meet. And, and you're you're you know, you're already two thousand in the hole. Now I'm I'm getting on the phone telling you, by the way, you owe another six thousand to us. I don't like saying that, but it's it's the fact, and it's it's heart wrenching, and it's hard to to uh, deal with. But it, it it happens every day. 
Um, anybody have any questions regarding anything? I did have one. Uh, so, being a leader in the in the financial industry of one of the many, 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 uh, mm -hmm. I will admit to making kind of one of the situations where you described where someone was distracted and doing a million things at the mm -hmm. same time. And what I, I, was, I don't remember exactly what I was trying to purchase online, mm -hmm. but uh, I ended up falling victim. It was a small one. Luckily for me, it was like a fifty-five dollar purchase or something that and I was. You know, I've got, I just moved here to Florida, mm -hmm. got a two-year-old. And so it was really fun to be that distracted. But uh, my question is, is when you're making purchases online and, and of course you want to make them from reputable places, but are there things that, that we should look for specifically on, on websites, whether we're making the purchases personally or for businesses, um, are, there, are there things we should look for that would be signs to either not purchase or signs that would say, this is, this is where you want to want to make those purchases well I'll, i do always say if it's too good to be true it usually is for for deals and, and things of that nature but especially for easy money making situation but sometime online it is tricky i usually go to reputable sites i go to i i'll shop through amazon if i do and i i still i'm a personal per, a person i like to go out i like to touch feel see handle that kind of thing but but if i do buy, buy some online i try to go through some of the most known reputable sites, you know, through Amazon or, or whatnot. I'm not saying, you know, that is an endorsement, but just those are different places. But um, as a good point to you for shopping online, and this goes for businesses or personable, have, have a particular credit card or, or whatever you want to use and, and use as a card, credit card because you, you use your debit card. Once people get access to your cash, then your cash flow, that can mess up a whole lot of online automatic bill pays and everything else. So it can really mess your whole system up going forward. But if, you, if you're online shopping at home or, or keep one credit card with whatever balance, if you're at home, you know, personal stuff, low balance. I don't think you're going to shop for things that are three or $4,000 online. Maybe you do. I don't know. Um, and for businesses, you know, it's going to be higher, but Keep one particular credit card for that. That way, if it gets compromised, at least you know where it was compromised. You 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 got to you, I mean, you already know. Well, it was somewhere online. I don't know which purchase. I'll have to figure that out. But it narrows the it narrows the pattern down. It narrows the path. Um, when you purchase your gas, as long as you're disciplined enough to obviously, if you're not using cash, uh, use one credit card for that because cards get skimmed. And I'm, hey, my government card got skimmed a couple times at gas stations because we're all over the country. But I guarantee just about everybody here has had their, 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 one of their cards skimmed at a gas pump. And the reason I usually know if it's a gas pump or not, or, or you can usually tell where it's been skimmed or how it's been skimmed. If it's, if it's something that where they obviously use your, your PIN number and don't ever go to a gas station and use your PIN number from your debit card, always use your, your, your zip code don't, you know, or whatever you need to, but don't ever use your PIN number because once they you got your PIN number, they're going to drain your account. They're going right to the ATM and get the cash. And that's another thing that, you know, if you've used a PIN number, because if they got your, your that, they're going to use it and take all your cash out of any ATM. But use those credit cards just for those purposes. If I have one, I use it you know, straight from my gas. Then you, obviously, if it gets compromised, you, you know where it was at. You know, it was at a gas pump. If it's a certain one that you go to all the time, go to them or report it to law enforcement so they can go check it out. Um, because, uh, you know, they, they, they're, they're catching the, the, the skimmers all the time, but they're constantly putting them on the older pumps. Uh, I, again, I don't endorse one over another, but I will say that uh, uh, the, a lot of the newer dailies, uh, all, uh, the gate gas stations, um, uh, some of the, the newer places, uh, I think Wawa, even though the, Wawa was compromised, it wasn't through a skimming device. That was through internal uh they got they got compromised and hacked into their systems to get their all those uh, breaches of credit card numbers and information. That was through their whole system. That wasn't just at a, one or two pumps. All their all the newer places have newer pumps that are more, as they say, tamper proof. Where they're you know if somebody opens it up or tries to break into it, it shuts it down and it has to be inspected before they restart. Uh, so they're able to you know prevent the skimmer devices being put on there. And you're never going to see the skimming devices because. What they do is most of the pumps from gas stations, I'd say 90% of them over the United States, the older pumps have one, are from one company and they have one key that you can open up every pump with, the generic key. So with that being said, 
that once that key's stolen or lost or whatever, and the, and the fraudsters get it, they'll go around and they're going to they're going to put the in the, uh, the system the skimming devices is going to be inside the, the the pump itself. It's going to be plugged into the the mechanisms inside. You're never going to see it. It's not going to be on the outside like you would think a skimming device at a ATM would be, uh, where a lot of times it's an overlay of the keypad or maybe a pinhole camera is glued in somewhere to the side um, or even a, a, a something put right over the card reader where you go in and it just captures your information. It's not going to alter the use of the card. It's just going to capture the information. And a lot of people are doing, they're doing, the processor is doing Bluetooth. They'll just drive up, download it and never even take the thing off or come back for it. They'll just wait a few days, get as much as they can and go on and get another one down the road. Cause you can order them. You can order skim devices. You can hand make them. You can put um, uh, through China, they're, 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 you can order some online. Uh, you, you, you can send your schematics at the ATM you, you're looking at and they're the masters of copying things. So they will, they will take the measurements. They will devise uh, the, 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 the pieces and parts that go on there and you can order them to, to, to use yourself. And of course they sell them as uh, with other names or other uses which is fine. I mean, you, you have uh, the, the, the devices that you use for creating a skim credit card, which uh, what we call white plastic, uh, you can use a debit card, uh, you can use a gift card. It's been, a, you know, once it's, you know, you can change the schematics of it through the uh, device on the back, um, through the, the, um, the stripe magnetic stripe on the back. That's why a lot of things are going to the chip now, because with the chip reader, uh, if, if, you, your card is used at an ATM or a gas station, wherever it's used. If it's your card with your chip in there, we're going to know it. If it's a, if it's a scam card, it's not going to have the chip reader in there. It's going to, it's going to tell us. So we know for a fact, if it was your card and if you have your card on you and your card was used with the chip, then it was you that did it. And we're going to eventually get full video and people will try to lie about that too. Unfortunately say, I, you know, Hey, my car got stolen and this purchase was made when it in fact was them. Um, so there, there's a lot of aspects to that, but, uh, definitely, um, use particular cards for, for different situations and it's easier to protect it, you know, with low limits, uh, and that's going to protect you necessarily. The credit card company obviously will, will reimburse it once if things are noticed soon enough, uh, for certain purchases, certain things. Any other questions? Uh, no, thank you. We didn't have other questions. We did have a couple, uh, it looks like we've got some. Uh, juice is flowing because we've got a couple of comments and just additional things as well. Uh, so uh -huh. Allison Burns also said it's a, in regards to the shopping online, looking for uh -huh. a PCI and DSS uh, certified badge on a uh -huh. website as, as a potential way to assist. Yeah. And then um, uh, Jim, Jim LaPointe again, who had the question earlier, he, he also mentioned just, uh, you know, also another good idea uh, just to add on is, uh, just know what what type of fraud protection that, that your credit card provider is giving you, and yeah, uh, just a couple additional things to add on to that. So, uh, absolutely good, good points. Absolutely thank great you. points. And I appreciate uh, and people then, sharing that. Uh, Margaret Rieger, thank you. Uh, she just uh, popped in and shared the uh, Florida fraud uh, tip hotline and the public assistance uh, fraud <laughs> hotline as well, or Florida public assistance fraud hotline, uh, which I won't read the numbers because if you're driving or trying to write it down. That'll be a little bit much, but it is in the chat. And it, so uh, thank you all for, for sharing that. It looks like sharing what you're sharing, Bobby, has got great, great stuff going and having everybody else think of ways to help too. So. And, and, and I appreciate everybody's comments on this because I, I can't remember everything that I'm talking about. And sometimes, like I said, I go a little fast and I, I, you know, all the little points, there's a lot of little things out there that if people remember. I, I do appreciate them sharing. Uh, it helps. Uh, usually at this at these events, if it's in person, I also have booklets that I bring out, and we have them in all the buy stars. We should at, mo at most of them. I've, I've, they're ordering them. It's through the government. I had it when I was with the Secret Service. We ordered them. Uh, it's an identity theft booklet where if you've had identity theft happen to you, it, it's a kind of a step by step procedure on how to what to do now, what to do next. Contact your credit bureaus. Uh, you know, get copies of your credit history and start going through it. If you have to contest things, there are certain procedures you need to do. File the police reports, things of that nature. Um, but if you go to any of the Bystars, um, they should have them. If they don't, ask them to order them because, uh, you know, I, you can get, we get 400 at a time. And so I have each branch order their own. So they always have them for the members and anybody who wants them. Uh, again, I kept a trunk full and I, you know, my box in my car when I was with the Secret Service and I gave them out all, 
you know, con- constantly. Matter of fact, I have some from my, my daughter who's a deputy in St. John's County now. So if she ever come across the name Fultz, uh, yeah, that's my daughter. Um, so anyway, I got, I'm getting her so she can give them out also. Uh, as she understands and, and learns about the fraud that's going on. Um, Anybody had any uh, uh, phone calls from the IRS or um, Social Security about things? Or um, where you have, um, and this happens a lot to elderly folks um, and elderly uh, abuse things that I, I deal with, but uh, and it was unfortunate where they call, hey, your grandson or your child was in a car accident and is in a lot of trouble. They need that we need money to for this pay these hospital bills or and then they call back uh well now that now that this part's clearing up now they're going to be arrested because of they were involved it was a dui and and they injured some people so if you want to protect them from going to jail just send us this money pay these bills these fines and we'll be done with it uh you know it happens all the time and uh to the tune of a lot of, i mean thousands of dollars can go out the door because people don't they will get panicky and they'll be told, don't say nothing to anyone. That's another red flag. When people, all they need to do is pick up the phone and, and look and call their family members. Say, hey, did Billy, did Billy Joe Bob, is he, is he, uh, is he okay? He's, I heard he was in an accident. No, he's sitting right here having dinner with us, you know, or no, he's in class right now. So uh, if they would just do the simple little things uh, like that, it, it, it would prevent that. But if you're, if the bad guys are calling, Say they call 100 people a day, all they need is one. They get one hit and they can make thousands of dollars. So it's worth their time to continue to do this kind of stuff. It's just, uh, we put we put awareness out there all the time. I know through Vistar we have on our, our websites. Uh, I'm constantly working with our, our, our um, uh, Ryan Smithen, who, who works on our um, Facebook pages and, and, and whatnot and getting fraud alerts out there to people as much as possible. Somebody have something? I have a question. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I'm always really scared to use my phone to buy something with my credit card. Mm-hmm. Is that just uh, me, or is that uh, safe enough to do? I mean, it's so convenient. Mm-hmm. Um, if if you know thoughts? if you if you know where you're you know where you're ordering things and who you're talking to, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I've done it myself. Sometimes you know it's it's just the way of thing of doing business. But if you're if you're doing business with if it's people you're continuing to do business with, then yeah. Or if, if it's something like that, make sure that they have your information and try to work online if you can with them. Uh, but if you're doing it over the phone, if it's just uh, if you know it's a reputable business, not, I don't have a, there's no problem with that. Well, uh, no, you're, I mean, are you talking about receiving uh, calls and ordering? No, like say say I pull up Amazon on my phone and uh, uh-huh. pay for something. Mm-hmm. that I buy not, something and, and use my credit card yeah if you're like i said if you're using a reputable site like amazon I, I do it mm-hmm. i i have their amazon app so i just use it on there and my stuff saved in their in their system yeah uh, you know so it, it, yeah you, you, there are certain things like i said the convenience you have to weigh the 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 chance taking the chance on the convenience and, and is it worth it or not and and, and is it, does it benefit your business i mean and again Use a particular credit card for certain things. That way, if it does get hit, you you might you you have a better avenue of figuring out where it was compromised at, and 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 being able to contact that company that maybe was involved in in the compromise or got maybe they got hacked and not you. You don't know that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Uh, Bobby, we did have yeah we did have another question come in uh, actually uh-huh. from uh, Kamal Gasparin. Uh, he asked, "What's what's the best way to 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 stop uh, robocalls?" He did an example that he gave is lately he has uh, received some from Social Security, but most recently Apple and Amazon uh, mm-hmm. and some part of the spoof calls. Uh, his account has been compromised. Um, it, well, I for an example I have is one from the war- car warranty people. I, I get them all the time, you know, based on my. Um, I know there's apps out there that are coming out with different apps that are supposed to be able to do this. Honestly, I don't have a hundred percent answer for that. I usually look at the phone call and I, I'm one of the guys that'll answer it. I don't care if I don't like who's on the other end, I hang up. That's all. Uh, I know it's a pain. If you see calls and a lot of them, you can tell uh, if they're robo calls because of the location they're calling from, or if it's a hundred number, I just let it go to voicemail and, and then maybe I'll spin over and block it, but uh, and you know, block it out of my phone. Um, 
other than that, I don't know. I know there's, like I said, there's supposed to be a, uh, apps out there coming out with uh, things to prevent the robo calls. And there's also supposed to be legislation to, to stop this. But uh, a lot of times you can also, uh, it's like junk email. You can go in there and undes un uh, describe to them, you know, uh, but you have to find it to do that. It's sometimes it's a lot of a very small print. You have to blow it up this my, uh, to find it and then you know, click on it to do it. Uh, that's hey, our, our, our information's out there. Everybody's is out there. The dark web, believe me, if anybody thinks that their information is not out there, you're sadly mistaken. I mean, I've been compromised through OPM. I've been, you know, and, and that, how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people work in the government. So our information has been out there. Uh, I've been compromised through, uh, what was it? Uh, Target, I think, um, uh, Home Depot. There, there's a lot of big places that have, you know, some of your information's out there because you've signed up for different things, uh, whether it be a credit card, they have all your information because you had, you know, that or, or uh, for whatever reason. So everybody's information out there. It's a matter of going. People say you should do it once a year. You get free. You get a free uh, um, credit uh, check once a year from Equifax or Experian. So I say do it twice a year. Go to Equifax and re uh, request your your credit history. From them, you know, and then six months later, go to TransUnion and request your, your uh, credit history. I also have an app on my phone, which I like. And again, I don't try to endorse things, but I use Credit Karma. It doesn't, it's, I'm not worried about the credit score. It's not really accurate with that. But what it does is if I have something happen, uh, either an account gets closed because I haven't used it in a long time and it's dormant, or if somebody did hack and, and, and use something and open up something in my name, it will alert me, hey, uh, you need to check your, your, your uh, credit cards, or you need to check this. It tells you what you open. It's very accurate. I've used it for several years now, and it's worked well. Uh, it's an app. You go online. You, yes, you have to give them, I think, your social or some information on there because it has to have your information. But it's secure, and it, it's been, you know, and I it, it just, I pull it up. You know, I pull it up at least probably once a week, once every two weeks, just to check my credit history to see if everything's still active is mine, and there's no, no unusual activity. Um, I check my my uh, my financial accounts daily. I'll I will check those daily with my app that I have through my uh, uh, through my financial institution, just to make sure everything that's being spent is me. Uh, of course, I get tech. I set it up for text messages too. Once I've spent something or used my card, it'll immediately come back. And you know, it, my credit cards are faster. Uh, it's usually overnight for my um, my debit card. But it will tell me, you know, hey, you, you spent this such such and such an amount at, at whatever location. Of course, if it's not me, then I'm going to immediately call and have my stuff locked down and change my account information. And sometimes you have to, you know, it's an inconvenience, but it has to happen if you get compromised. Any other questions? I don't see any. None in the chat. Um, and no, we're creeping up on 925 ish right now, but if everybody, does anyone have any questions? You can feel free to unmute, um, and, and share those, those questions or, or even comments. If you, yeah. If you have anything to share a story about, uh, something that's happened to you or a friend or family member, please share it too. Because, uh, again, we, I learn every day from different, different situations that happen to people, you know, different scenarios things change. Uh, there's all types of scams and schemes out there. And some of mine not even have covered today because there's plenty out there. And if, if you have something I haven't covered, please share it with us. Uh, I would like everybody to, to know about it. And maybe I can you know, touch, touch on that a little bit more too. Hi, um, I don't have anything to share about fraud. I've gotten some credit cards information taken before. It's pre pretty easily resolved. But I just wanted to say that um, my name is Margaret Rieger. I am the Northeast Florida Regional Manager for the Florida Department of Financial Services. Uh, I work for the state CFO, Jimmy Patronis. And we actually have a fraud tip hotline as well as a public assistance fraud hotline. Um, I put the numbers for those in the chat as well as my email. Um, if you guys have any trouble with the capital, I'm not an expert on fraud, but I can certainly put you in touch with the right person and help you until you get the assistance you need. Um, and I think those numbers on my email are going to be sent out on the follow-up email. So um, just if anyone does have any issues with fraud now or in the future, um, the Florida Department of Financial Services is, is a very good resource to reach out to as well as 
your banks and local law enforcement and whoever else you need to contact. So just wanted to make everyone aware of that. No, appreciate you sharing that. Uh, all the information we have out there, the better uh, for people to reach out for more. The more uh, the more avenues uh, to go down to the help uh, get help is is great. I appreciate that very much. Uh, again, you know, I, like I said, I don't have all the answers. I I, I I've heard all the problems, <laughs> but sometimes uh, you know I, I'm learning every day myself, and uh, I do appreciate when we have different uh, avenues to go down. Uh, anything else from anybody? Again, uh, I know time flies, uh, but uh, we can discuss fraud all day long. Bobby, this is Kathy. I just want to mention one thing that um, someone did share in the chat. Uh, a local CPA, I think Deborah Smith, mentions um, a couple of things, but one specifically I thought that we should just point out is that um, some of her clients have reported to her that the IRS has threatened them for payments. So I think it's true to understand. I think we should all be aware of the fact, but maybe it's not a bad idea to re re remind that the IRS will not call an individual for payment. Yeah, my, my, fa my, my father is 82 and he gets him and his girlfriend, they get these calls all the time. He's pretty savvy because he hears me talk all the time about it. But um, yeah, the, these threats are, 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 that's all they are. The IRS is not going to call you and threaten you to put you in jail if you don't pay a fine to them immediately. That's not going to happen. You're not going to have to pay by gift card or anything else. If the IRS has an issue, they're going to they're going to schedule an appointment to meet with you at their at the federal building and they're going to discuss whatever the issue is. Uh, they're not going to ambush you or it's not going to be a secret. You're going to get letters from them and you're going to uh, have to meet in person eventually to discuss things. They're not going to they're not going to reach out and demand money right away. That does not how any government agency works, uh, whether it be the IRS, whether it be the uh, Secret Service, whether it be the uh, St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Uh, they're not going to threaten to put you in jail for a warrant if you don't pay a fine real quick. That doesn't happen that way. You're going to get fair warning and notices about anything, whether it be from the clerk of the court or from any other agency. All anything right. else? I don't see anything else in the chat. Thank you for catching that one, Kathy. I must have missed it. I know there was rapid fire for a second in there, so I, I must have missed that one. So thank you, uh, Deborah, and thank you, Kathy, for pointing that out. If I could touch on, if I could touch on one thing, uh, and this is this is kind of a pet peeve of mine. It's elderly abuse. Uh, I'm also part of a new uh, group uh, dealing with uh, exploitation of elderly and, and and trying to figure out ways to prevent it and with state legislature and, and whatnot. But um, elderly abuse, when people think of that, they think of just physical abuse, but it's really there's financial and mental uh, abuse also, and the financial part. It's always connected some way because if they're physically or mental or mentally abusing somebody, it's all it has it touches their finances. Some for some reason it's because of that. Um, people, elderly folks get they get to a point where and you have as a family member you have to be cognizant of this that if you want them to share information about something that happened to them, you need to have their trust. And people, once they get to a certain age, are scared to tr to to share things and they're of embarrassment and the fact that they don't want to lose their freedoms. Because if 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 just for an example, if my father came to me and said, you know, I just gave away twenty thousand dollars because of whatever scam he got caught up in, the initial reaction to most people would be to flip out and you know, okay, fine, that's it. I'm taking over everything. You know, I'm going to take over your accounts. I'm gonna, you're not driving anymore. They're going to, he's, he's scared of losing his freedoms. And when you take a, the first thing that usually goes is their ability to drive. And when they lose that, then they can't just get up and go where they want to go. That, that freedom. Now they, now you're telling them you're taking over their finances. Now they can't even go out and shop for whatever, you know, they can't even go to the grocery store or go to the convenience store and hang out with them. whatever they want to do coffee shop and shop or use their cards uh, or cash because they've lost that freedom. Uh, and, that, and they're they're terrified of this, and I can't. You know, everybody's terrified of this. And you gotta, so you got to understand to go into it baby steps. Maybe talk to them about monitoring their accounts with them, share the responsibility with them, keep let them have their freedoms, but keep an eye on things for them. Um, you know, it, because again, it, when people lose their freedoms, you know that they lose life, they lose a reason to live. And you don't want that. And you, you need to look at the person from there, from, look at it from their perspective. So you use your, their eyes to look at what you're looking at and, and, and understand and talk to them about it. Come out and talk to them. Hey, have you ever had this happen? Or if this ever happens, please let me know. 
you know, or if you get to the point you feel they may need some assistance, talk to them about sharing responsibilities with their and keep an eye on things to protect them. Talk about you helping to protect them, not to take over their lives, but to help guide them and work with, you know, so it, it, that's just it. That's the, that's one of my biggest things that uh, that's the way you're, that's the only way you're going to have to keep open communication with your family members is to, is to not freak out on them and to be understanding with them and work with them on anything that, that this happened. And that's the only reason, way they're going to share things with you. I like that. Thank you, Bobby. And, and uh, I like that, that leading with empathy. It's a great way to, to, to kind of wrap up. And, um, you know, so thank you very much for, for, for your time, Bobby. And, and also, Margaret, thank you as well for sharing additional resources. It's, it's uh, fantastic. And, you know, just on behalf of the chamber, just and thank you, Bobby, for sharing your time with us this, this morning. And um, I just want to thank everyone for joining us as well. Um, you know, and, and also spending that Friday morning with us first thing starting off your day. So thank you. Um, we do have, again, like I said in the beginning, this was the third of a, uh, finan a third financial workshop. I don't know why that felt like a mouthful, but I got it out uh, that that the Chamber and Vistar have partnered to, to put it together. So uh, they're, they are uh, all recorded and available for playback on Chamber's website, and that's www sjcchamber.com.